friends welcome to concepts of geology online classes we were studying the texture and structures of ore bodies under economic geology part 1 module 3 primary textures are already covered in the last class today we will start the secondary textures okay so for today our topic will be this one secondary texture okay so let's move i have already told in the last class that secondary textures result from the modification of primary textures okay what kind of modification modification may be due to replacement due to slow cooling or deformation etc okay so secondary texture results from modification of primary textures okay the causes of modification may be replacement or slow cooling that is also called annealing and this may be deformation also okay so these are the probable causes so firstly we will concentrate secondary textures resulted from replacement okay so first one is replacement a prime cause which produces a secondary texture is often replacement replacement is the chemical alteration of minerals which happens due to thermodynamic instability okay so replacement happens due to thermodynamic instability and this is chemical alteration fine now these replacements may take place along the grain boundaries along the fracture or fault plane or some preferred crystallographic directions okay so suppose this is a grain and the replacement is taking place along the fractures like this or suppose two grains are sharing boundaries like this one and the replacement is taking place along the shared boundaries here okay so this is the new phase and this was existing now let's have some examples of replacement okay the first texture we will discuss that is a result of replacement is called martization this is a crystallographically controlled replacement okay we may found hematite along 111 plane which is replacing a magnetite grain okay so suppose this is a grain of magnetite and we are getting hematite along this 111 plane this one is hematite and this one is magnetite so finally martization is crystallographically controlled replacement of magnetite by hematite along 111 plane okay and this kind of grains found under microscope they are called martite now the second example of replacement texture is at all texture okay what is this this is a compositionally controlled replacement okay suppose in a intergrown crystal or in a compositionally zone crystal a particular phase is replaced by an another phase while the other phases are remain unchanged okay so this texture is called at all texture so this is compositionally controlled replacement of any particular phase in a zone crystal or intergrown crystal you may take an example from a zone crystal where the core is composed of pyrite and this is getting replaced by cobaltite okay so suppose this is the zone crystal okay the core is made up of pyrite okay now the final example of replacement is the boxwork texture this is composed of criss cross laps of goethite hematite and sometime pyrite also formed due to weathering in goshen zone okay so this is criss cross laps of goethite hematite and pyrite sometimes formed due to weathering in goshen zone remember i have discussed 
the Goshen Zone in the last class. Now, these were some informative talk. You can find these textures in detail in any standard textbook with the photomicrographs. Let's discuss something interesting. Okay? Suppose a replacement is occurring along the cleavage plane or along the fracture in a mineral. Then how can we differentiate it from a fracture infilling by precipitation? Remember, I have discussed about the infilling of fractures by precipitations in the last class in detail. Okay? We have two grains with fracture and a mineralized fluid is traveling through this. Now suppose as these two grains are not of same composition, the first grain is having precipitation infilling and in the second grain we are having the replacement. Now we have to differentiate between them. Understand, this kind of problems readily comes under microscopic observations. Okay, the answer is practical. In replacement, some of the original phase is consumed and irregular fracture surface is rounded off. Okay, so suppose this one is replacement and here some of the original phase will be consumed by this mineralized fluid. Okay, so we will have the contact like this. So this is the new phase and this is the old phase. So here we will have a diffused contact. The contact line will not match also in either side of the new phase okay but in case of fracture infilling suppose in this figure we will get a sharp contact okay so this is the new phase here and this one is old phase you see this contact will remain sharp just like this this is the character of infilling and here the contact planes in both side of the new phase will just match like jigs puzzle okay so this is the infilling and this is the replacement. I think you have understood the difference practically. Okay. Was it interesting? Fine. Now let's back to the main topic. The next factor which can modify a primary texture is called cooling. Okay. Slow cooling or annealing. Slow cooling after crystallization that is called the annealing produces strain free large equivalent grains with straight boundaries. The cause behind this is to reduce the surface area and the interfacial tension in the grains. Okay? The interfacial angle depends on the mineralogy of the rock but in case of monomineralic aggregate they tend to be 120 degree. Okay? This texture is called granoblastic polygonal okay the monomineralic aggregate in which interfacial angles are 120 degree the cause behind this is to reduce the surface area so this will look like suppose these are the aggregates of grains and the interfacial angle is always 120 degree The next effect of slow cooling is the exolution texture. So as the name is suggesting here, the phases were in solutions once upon a time, but they are not continuing the solution till now. Okay? In elevated temperature, a single site of an atomic structure may be shared by two or more different atoms. This is called a solid solution. Okay? Suppose this is an ordered atomic arrangement and this particular site is shared by two different elements which are having compatibility. For example, suppose iron and magnesium. Okay? As this is happening in a solid state, so this is called a solid solution. Okay? But in some cases, when the system is cooled, then it may become unstable okay then these elements form their separate phases and occur in a single grain as x solution lamellae this is a large magnetite grain and you will find ilmenite like this 
One another example is a randomly dispersed or crystallographically oriented rods and blades of sphalerite are often found in chalcopyrite grain. This texture is called chalcopyrite disease. Okay, here this is the chalcopyrite and the new phase is sphalerite. However, there is a confusion about the X solution among the chalcopyrite and sphalerite. Whatever, the look is like X solution texture. Okay, now again a question here. How can we differentiate between a replacement along fracture or X solution texture? They are often look very similar under microscope. Suppose we have two grains in one of which we are getting a replacement along fractures like this one and in another one we are having X solution texture. So how we can differentiate between them? Okay, here the way is in replacement where the fractures intersect there the volume of the secondary phase increases. Okay, but in case of an exolution texture we normally get depletion zones in the intersection point of two lamellae okay so here we will found depletion so this will be an exolution texture and this will be replacement texture however these features are not very easy to identify and may even not present everywhere then only your experience can save you. Now the next effect due to cooling which can modify a primary texture is inversion. Okay. I have discussed this during the vein formation also. Inversion means the interchange between polymorphs. Often the structure of high temperature polymorph is preserved after the inversion. They are called paramorphs. Okay. Due to this inversion upon cooling when marcasite changes to pyrite, a volume reduction up to 2.6% may occur. Okay, so this will create a small pore in rock. This is called secondary porosity. Okay, so these were some textures of slow cooling or annealing. Now we will move to the third factor that was deformation. Okay, deformation may produce twinning, kink banding, or pressure solution in mineral grains. Deformation twinning occurs due to disturbance in atomic arrangement. For example, suppose polysynthetic twin in pyrrhotite. King banding you know from metamorphic petrology. This is a kind of microfolding. We will discuss it in structural geology or metamorphic petrology in detail. Okay, so this is a kind of microfolding. And the pressure solution is the dissolvement of minerals in an area of high stress and deposition in the area of low stress. Suppose this is a grain, okay, and I am providing pressure from this direction. So the mineral here will be dissolved and this will be deposited here. These are often found in terms of overgrowth. The pre-existing linear features in minerals like cleavages also may be deformed under stress. Okay, for example, triangular cleavage pit formed due to deformation is very characteristic feature in Galena. Okay, now to special deformation features found in shear zones. Shear zones are areas of localized stress. The first one is the sclerin. The deformed ores often contain zones along which the shearing has occurred. Okay, these zones are called sclerin. Here the ore minerals may be pulverized and smeared out parallel to the direction of the movement. Okay, even you do not believe that typically equivalent mineral such as galena, they also become elongated and fractured along this sclerin zone. These are planar features. The ore minerals become very fine-grained, sometimes recrystallized relative to the surrounding rock in this zone. Okay, so this is called sclerin. The second one is called Dutch bugan. This is a single word. Here, the deformation is so severe that the all-over ore and gang minerals become smashed and mixed in one another. 
This typically looks like if you take two different colors of molding clay and mix them by pressing in your hand. Okay. Remember, this is a penetrative deformation that is it affects both the ore and gang mineral. So these were some common secondary textures. Let us summarize the class. Fine. So hereby we have completed the textures and structures of ore bodies. I am stopping here today. In the next video, we will start the module 4 and we will learn paragenesis of ore minerals. Please be with me, subscribe and share the channel, press the bell icon to get notification first. Write your views on the comment box or through email, the ID is mentioned on the description. If you need the lecture notes, then also let me know that. Okay, thank you for watching, goodbye.